Yo, what's up everybody? It's time for more rambling on the couch about Mercedes, right? I guess it's a chair. But uh, I wanted to talk today about uh, flex tunes, right? Um, like, so not, not just flex tunes, all ethanol tunes, all right? And specifically on the 550, this channel is kind of about 550s, but the 278 is really close to the 157. I mean, they're, they're very similar cars, uh, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I get that the CLS 63S does 3.1 seconds, um, but overall, like a lot of the things that you can do on a 157, you can do on a 278 and vice versa. So like, um, same, same sort of things will apply back and forth. Um, all right, so that out of the way, uh, man, my, my, my intros are terrible. Uh, like, I feel like I could have gotten all that done in five seconds, but here, let's, let's just power through. All right, so Jake Peterson just released uh, some information about um, a car that his company's working on, of course, Eurocharged, um, about uh, a 550 that's completely E85. So this is not a flex tune. Like, you have to fill this up with E85. Um, so this is probably not the best option for a daily unless it's like, you know, you have E85 like all around you. Um, and it's probably not the best option if, if you're going to go cross country, unless you have like a My Genius or, you know, HP tuners or something that you could switch back and forth. Because, um, basically like if you're going to try to drive cross country on E85, it can be, it can be tough, especially out West. You know what I mean? Like there are long, <laughs> like stretches of roads between like Kansas and Nevada, where there might be 40 to 100 miles, maybe even 200 miles between gas stations. So um, you're betting that they have E85 and they might not. So uh, one of my friends had an E85 uh, WRX or something like that, you know, it might have been the Mitsubishi version, like an Evo. And I mean, it was it was cool. I think it did 400 horsepower at the wheels or something pretty sick. Um, and this is about 10 years ago. And he just said, you know, I can't drive this across the country. I got to get shipped because there's no E85. So, you know, he, it was like his Colorado car and he had a different car in DC. Right. Um, so yeah, that's something to note, but full E85, Jake Peterson is making 600 horsepower at the wheels. I'm going to throw up that graphic. Let me move one way or the other. Okay. So that way, right. Um, and so that's at the wheels, that's on a dyno, these are reliable numbers, Jake Peterson's a reliable tuner, uh, or I guess, you know, he runs the show and he employs reliable tuners, uh, however you want to put that, you can trust these numbers, right? Um, and to be honest, I, I kind of find that Eurocharged, uh, does not like to put it all out there, like, unless you're asking for, like, there's like the tunes to be spicier. Like I've, I've heard several times that they leave margin of error, like with the TCU tunes. A lot of people were talking about this on the E55 group, the M113K group, right? I've heard the same thing about it on um, the 722.9, like the seven speeds, like their TCU tunes leave a little bit on the table. Like you can call them up and ask them to be a little bit hotter. And, um, that's sort of the transition into this other post, uh, which is a f also on Tune Mercedes group on, on Facebook. Um, this guy, uh, I don't want to put his name out there, <laughs> you know, because uh, for whatever reasons, right, I'm not putting his name out there, but he's a cool guy, right? I appreciate him posting, I appreciate his car. Um, he did a 3.39 second launch, and that's that's real zero to 60 that's not some one foot foot you know launch um the one foot launch was 3.17 seconds so let's put that up here again right um and basically this is interesting because he's running an e30 flex tune or an e50 flex tune so what's what we need to know about is ethanol has a greater resistance to detonation than gasoline right so if you looked at ethanol, I think it's the equivalent of like 110 octane. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 
like a physicist. <laughs> like, I, I don't even want to pretend to know, but I think it's around 105 to 110, you know. Um, and so it can withstand detonation um, to a much greater degree than like 93 or 91 octane. So you can run, you know, more advanced timing and more boost. The downside of this is that um, ethanol does not contain as much energy density, right? So you need more and more gas or ethanol injected into the cylinders to actually get that same sort of energy density that you would get with 93 um, gasoline, right? So E50 flex tunes can use stock injectors, right? They can use stock fuel pumps. They can use stock high, pump, uh, high pressure and low pressure fuel pumps, right? Uh, you do not need to upgrade to AMG fuel pumps. Like the guy who put that 3.39 second number up, I don't think is on AMG fuel pumps now. I might have to delete this video and retract it or whatever if I find out it's not true. I do delete some videos sometimes if I find out some information that makes those other videos like not correct. I want to give people correct information. Um, I probably get YouTube algorithms angry at me. Uh, but basically, um, E50 up to E47, E50, you, which is like half and half, like half E85, half gasoline, you can run stock everything. The other cool thing about these flex tunes is that, you know, you can drive them across country. You can put in 93 and then, um, you know, put in E85 for like half of it, right? Um, and that, that's pretty nice. I mean, it might even be good, in fact, if you have places where you can get E85, it might be actually useful because E85 right now might be less expensive than gas uh, due to reasons that like I don't want to I don't want to be you know I don't want to put out too hot of a take here but I mean let's be honest day one we canceled the gas pipeline and now we're investigating um you know why gas prices are high when we suspended drilling and such the gas prices are high by design and it's by the current administration's own actions right so E85 might be less expensive than gasoline right now. Um, and I guess it's always that way, but you know, per mile, um, it might be less expensive because again, you're gonna need more E85 to go the same amount of distance because it doesn't have as so much energy density. So your miles per gallon will go down with E85. The cost will also go down a little bit. The E-Flex tunes are really cool because you can drive cross country with them. They are good for daily drivers. You might save some money, like I just went on that tangent about, right? Um, all those things make it a pretty solid choice. Um, and, you know, it, it's just it's just solid. Now, I wouldn't go from, like, a full tank of 93 to, like, e, you know, 50-50. I would probably give the ECU some time to learn and also the TCU, you know what I mean? And you might want to do a transmission reset where you hold the gas to the floor you know there's like a little clicker like wide open throttle clicker all the way to the floor for about 30 seconds you press the power button on do not press the, like the brake just the gas uh your position two um then hold the, you know keep holding the gas to the floor for about 30 seconds turn it off keep holding the gas for 30 seconds so holding the gas the whole time about 30 seconds chill for about 30 seconds and you can leave I've heard a lot of people say, hey, you need to hold it longer. Um, I'm sure that is the official, you know, whatever recommendation, but I've never had to do that. I think that 30 seconds does the trick. Um, and, and you can tell, like, because it also resets, um, like, check engine lights. So you, you can tell if you've got it, you know, if you have a check engine light. Uh, but you can also kind of tell in the feeling, like, you, you'll be able to know. All right, um, and you probably want to wait 30 seconds and then open the door. That'll do the transmission reset. So the E50s cannot do um, as much horsepower, right, as a full E85. E85, full E85, like racing gas. It's basically racing gas. It's like a racing gas tune, right? Um, now, 
one thing you have to realize though is E85 Pure, E85 tunes are going to be very, very fucking quick. Like there's, there's no way around it. I haven't seen the numbers on that, um, on that, uh, you know, uh, the Jake Peterson's car. That's like the first full 550 I've seen with the 85. I would guess it's going to be in the 10 seconds, um, just because, you know, E85 is, is pretty fucking quick. I would guess it's going to be about 10.9. Um, it might be a low 11 second car, but it's not going to be much slower than that. You know, it's going to be really fucking close to 10 seconds or, or 11 seconds. And maybe the reason why we haven't seen the numbers yet is because uh, Jake is dialing it in. Maybe it's like 11.2 right now and he wants to get down to 10.9. Um, or maybe, you know, that, that's just pure conjecture. But to run this, it's going to be about $5,000 at least just in parts because you're going to need to upgrade to the spool um, high pressure fuel pump. And you'd probably need to let, you know, uh, Eurocharge run this, uh, you know, for you. Like, you'd, you, this is probably not something you can put together. Um, but I think we're probably going to see a 3.0 second, 3.1 second, 0 to 60, really close to 2.9, I would guess. Maybe the one foot is a 2.9. Um, the reason why is because... Well, there's too many reasons right now why, but I would guess it's going to be in that range. Um, but, you know, r really like high twos to low threes for 60 miles per hour compared to like 3.39 um, and a one foot of 3.17 for the E-Flex with uh, TCU. And uh, yeah, I, I would just put that out there. So you're looking at maybe, I don't know. I don't know how much the Eurocharge Magic is going to cost on this, but I would guess it's going to be like $1,600 for the tune, uh, maybe $2,000 for the tune, plus the $5,000 for the fuel pump, and maybe $1,000 to install it. So I'm, I'm going to guess that you're going to be around maybe $7,000 for a full E85 car. But at the same time, when you're looking at the differences between an AMG like CLS, let's just stay with CLS, CLS 63S and a 550 and M278, their differentials are going to be probably more than $7,000. I probably would not run these types of horsepowers without updated timing chain if you're on the old timing chain. Um, this is probably something you're going to need updated timing chain for. Um, but yeah, pretty exciting stuff because... To get this type of performance before, you'd have to run turbos, like hybrid turbos. And to be 100% honest, like a lot of the people in the AMG side, the, the 157s, who are running the E-Flex tune are getting, you know, really good com performance compared to maybe even slightly better performance compared to like new turbos. Um, I have not seen an E85 or an E-Flex with new turbos. Um, uh, I'm keep I'm keeping out look out for that, but you know, you, and like there there are some E63s out there and CLS 63s that are on ethanol or E flex like E50 that will run like um, like very low 11 second or 10 second quarter miles. Um, now I think those one weight reduction and maybe like an ice tank. Um, so like that's prepped, you know what I mean? But, uh, it is important to know that, you know, there might actually be a little bit more performance out of, um, you know, from the standstill to the quarter with ethanol versus a turbo. Now a turbo would probably take over rolling. So the E flex tune that we looked at, the E 30 flex tune, um, that had the TCU by Morendi. The ECU by uh, Eurocharge in the Stage 2 and had uh, UPD air spacers um, and filters. Their rolling time was not as, like, it was good, right? It was, like, I want to say, like, like maybe 6 seconds, low, like 5.8 seconds, 60 to 120, and maybe 7.8 seconds, like, 
120, 60 to 130, maybe, maybe a little bit higher than that. Like, uh, but so in that area, you turbos would do better. But getting back to the point on this completely long rambling uh, video, um, like this type of performance before you would have to do new turbos for and new turbos, I mean, that's at least $5,000 to install. And if you can get them installed for $5,000, you should take it, right? That's a good price. Um, that's the lowest I've seen. Um, and they're going to be like, I don't know, at least $2,500, right? Um, I've, I've been offered AMG uh, turbos um, takeoffs for about 1000 but those needed to be rebuilt. So basically, you have to send them into like VRP or Pure or WiseTech and get back another set of turbos. Um, but AMG turbos do work well on our car. Or on, on M157 turbos work really well on 278s. Hybrid turbos, um, there might be, you know, a slight degradation in reliability in terms of the turbo itself. I, I've heard that. I haven't, I don't have firsthand knowledge of that. But, um, you know, you're talking, let's just say it's $3,000, right? Um, plus $5,000 to install, that's $8,000, plus you'll probably need a tune. So you're really looking at like a $9,000, you know, upgrade. And, um, you know, 600 at wheel horsepower is pretty solid. That's like 720 at the crank. Um, now, I guess it's possible that with water methanol plus some big turbos, you you could go higher horsepower. Your performance might not be as good in, until you're rolling, though. Like, uh, it might just match the performance. So, you know, what we don't know yet and what, you know, we might have another 20-minute video about, you know, next year or whatever, is how, uh, like, an E85 hybrid turbo car would react and i'll look out for that because that would be really interesting but uh suffice it to say for now you know the e-flex tunes plus tcu tunes do really good work you know they are pretty solid um and something you should probably consider if you have e85 near you and you wanted more uh performance than um you know you know, pretty good performance. Like, I think that's like your best bang per buck per performance, like E flex tune plus TCU tune plus uh, filters intake. Um, and they might even be able to get a little more power with like, uh, like a black boost intake, uh, because that's UPD and those are risers. And that's only like 10 to 15 horsepower. The full intakes should be about 40 horsepower. Um, so, you know, that's some stuff to think about. Uh, the next step up in terms of bang per buck is probably the E85, and that'll be about $7,000, I'd imagine, uh, because, you know, you, you need the TCU, ECU, plus um, the high-pressure fuel pump. And that's not as great for, like, actually road-tripping car. You know, that's kind of more like, kind of like a Tesla at that point. You know, you probably don't want to drive across the country. Like, yeah, you might be able to, but it would be a pain in the ass, right? Um I'm sure I'm going to get some Tesla hate because of that. I mean, they're cool cars. Elon Musk is a genius. He figured out how to make the electric car cool, right? Um, so, and then, you know, the jury is still out on bigger turbos plus flex fuel or, you know, like pure E85. I'd love to see one. You know, it's very possible we could see some very fast cars the very quick cars, um, you know, and that would be really interesting. And, and turbos are probably better for rolling than the ethanol, but off the line, ethanol through the quarter is going to be a very compelling uh, upgrade for people. Um, and especially given the current gas prices, you know, E-Flex 2 might pay for itself. All right, guys, until next time.